All right, this is One Last Midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. So another item that came out of the automation update two was the power switch. So today we're gonna take a look at it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. When the automated two update came out, we were given another new item, which was called the power switch. The power switch is found in the small printer section where the extender and the splitter are right in between. And it costs 750 bytes to unlock and one copper to produce. Pretty inexpensive tool to have. The power switch is simply a on off toggle or you can even think of it as a bit operator where it is true or false or on or off. You simply just toggle with F to turn it off or to turn it on. It works very similar to the extender. When you hook power up to it, you have the arrows telling it that power is going to the power switch. And when you hook it up to another item, you could see that there's arrows indicating that power is going to that second item. In this case, the power switch is on. And so if we were to toggle it off, you would see that the floodlight on the platform A turned off. And then you could also see based off of the power cable, that it is receiving power but is not outputting power. This is the power switch in a nutshell. It simply turns on and off power to a specific section of your base building pieces. And you could also use the power switch with other sensors. In this case, I have a storage sensor and it is set to full or not full. And if I place the target pin on the power sensor and you can see currently that the storage is full. If I empty one item out, it will send a signal down to the power switch to turn off the floodlight. And if I put one on, you can see that the floodlight turned it on. So you can toggle this particular power switch on and off based off of a storage sensor. We could also set this up to use a battery sensor, very similar to the storage sensor where we're checking to see if the battery is full or not full or charged or empty or whatever mode you want it to be in. And as soon as it got removed, it would fire off a signal telling the power switch to turn on and off. And we can also do this combination with something with a power sensor where the power sensor is checking to see if we've gained power or lost power. And we could set it up to the switch where if we lose power, it would turn it off and gain power, it would turn the switch back on again. So you could see how useful this will be. Now we use an example of a floodlight, but you can replace this floodlight with any item that consumes power and you can see how useful that this power switch will be. Let's just look at a bigger example. So in this case, I have my automatic printing solution, right? We were printing out these medium resource canisters and we did it in a way that it's just all automated. Now this looks like spaghetti mess and I apologize for that, but I have this set up so that this button repeater feeds to these other button repeaters, which then in turn turns on this entire process. Because they added in the auto repeat function inside of most of the base building pieces we can now automate all of this whole production without having to have a timer like we previously had i covered that in another video but let's go ahead and turn this on and so as this is running what i've set up is i've set up power switches i've changed my power so that i've segmented it out and i've separated with the power switch and you can see here based off of this particular sensor, if this particular storage becomes full, then it will flip the switch on this power sensor, turning this whole section off. And that's why I had spidered out this whole power so that I could turn each one of these sections off. There, there is another sensor, storage sensor here that checks to monitor whether this particular storage is full or empty and winds up setting off the chem lab based off of whether this section is full or empty. I've got another storage sensor over here monitoring these two pieces of storage. So once these storages become full, it then shuts the printers on or off. And then finally, what I have over here is I have another power sensor that is if I move out of the way, cause it's trying to stick it in my backpack. I have another storage sensor, which is monitoring this storage. And once this is full, then it winds up turning off this power on and off. Okay, so that, that works well. So you could see how useful this would be, right? Why have this entire base pulling power when you don't need it? If this 
storage is filled up, I no longer need this process anymore because there's no more room to put glass. So why have these auto arms running or the smelter running or the soil centrifuge running when I don't need it to run? And so that's how useful the power switch can be. So you can monitor and turn off sections of your base that are not needed. So to simulate this, we've got our printers printing and once our storage becomes full, it's gonna send off a signal to turn off this power switch. So these printers will no longer work anymore. And why should they, since all the storage is filled? I hope this illustrates the idea of how powerful the power switches can be, and I hope you guys use them in your base constructions. Okay, that was my video on the power switch. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did hit that like button, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the community. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you know when I go live and when I post new videos. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.